Getting started in Tarkov is one of the most intense undertakings for a new game. There's so much you need to know to get started, and it won't make sense until you've died a few dozen times. Let's make that journey a bit easier. This video is the second segment in a three-part series on your first steps on an account in Tarkov. This video will cover your first raid into customs. Hi guys, and welcome to my realistic guide for getting better at Tarkov. The theme here is on how to get better without being able to frag out your entire way through a match. You don't need to be the top 1% to be able to make your way through this game. Welcome to Tarkov. Okay, to start with, I'm going to put a map in the top right to follow along with and a hyperlink will be present down below. We're going to go into an offline mode just to get your bearings straight on the first pass and then we'll jump into a live raid. So what you're going to do is go to your character, select next. All right, be careful about scrolling to these too fast. You don't want to jump into a raid unintentionally. We're going to pick something where it's a little bit more in the daytime so that we're not at risk of running into the night. Uh, we're going to enable offline mode. Nothing is saved here, but you're free to die, blah, 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 as you wish. We're not going to enable PVE here. What we're going to do is just go through, get our bearing straight, uh, and then use that to get into Tarkov. Okay, so why customs? Honestly, our first few tasks are going to have us going here a lot. So it's a pretty easy one to start in and kind of make a home base out of. But you don't have to do that. If you just want to focus on the quest and get off this map, that's also completely understandable. Now, we're going to go with the map here to follow along and use this to get us across customs and to get us out of customs. First thing to note, if you double tap O, you'll see your time left in raid and your exfils. Um, you have to get to one of these exfiltrations before the end of the map. Now we're not gonna do a full dive into customs here, so we're gonna go with the tried and true extracts that will always be available to you. The only real thing that you need to know is that when you spawn on one side of the map of customs, you have to get to the other side of the map in order to extract as a PMC. Now we've spawned on the west side of the map, um, this would be west, right, over this direction, and then east would be over this direction. So let's go towards the center. We're actually at the southwest of the map right now, and we'll kind of highlight that and pinpoint our, our trail as we go through here. If you follow along the back road over here, you'll receive you'll get to a gated bunker. You walk up to and open up. You can actually head down here. Now this won't be our extract for this PMC because it's on the same side of the map that we spawned on. But if you stand right here, you will start extracting if you spawned on the east side of the map. This extract will always be available if you spawn on the east side of the map. There's a few other extracts that are uh, available if they're turned on. There's a random chance that they'll be on or off. Now here is one of the first extracts that might not be available to you. You can tell that it's currently available because that light's turned on. If we had spawned on the east side of the map and we're coming over here, we could actually actually extract at this bunker too. It's the same theme as over there. You open up the gate and then you go down, turn to the left and you go up against the wall. You can extract. Now, if this light isn't on, you won't be able to extract here. We just came from that bridge, and that's where old gas is. This building has a switch in it. If you power it, you actually turn on one of the extracts that's in this building right here. A lot of people call this stronghold. Uh, there's various names for it. This is going to be the, the outermost construction building on the north side of the map. Like I said, you have to have that switch turned on in order to power the extract here. Uh, and then you have to have a factory key um, that lets you extract. So we won't have that at the start of the count, so we're not going to be using this all that often. But if somebody turns the switch on and opens it for you, you'll at least know where it is. Now, you enter the building, you go down the stairs here, it connect you to a basement that only is up against the back side of the building, right? And this key, um, or this door can be opened by the factory key. If the light's turned on, that's how you know you can extract from it. Another way to know is if somebody has taken that extract before, if you look, ZB-013 is the extract here. If it's green, that means somebody's powered it and taken it, so you know that it's open.
down the road here we've got dorms you have, there's two dorms uh buildings on either side of the road here you got three story dorms here two story dorms here um really important to know you'll be spending some time there but it's a pretty high pvp area so we're probably going to be avoiding it in the beginning You can tell that Smuggler's Boat Extract is active because there is a little campfire here that's smoking. If it's not uh, currently turned on, then you can't extract here. But since we spawned on the west side of the map and it's turned on, we can run up to just around this, the campfire here and we can see our extraction notice. And here we go. Here's our UAF. Uh, if you can extract here, it, um, this light will be on. If the light is not on, then you're not going to be able to extract. But again, since we spawned on the west side of the map, or on, this is an east extract, we can get out there this way. Now, there's two other guaranteed extracts. So kind of how the first burn that we hit on the west side of the map was a guaranteed extract for the east side. Uh, this is going to be a guaranteed extract for the west side. There's two other extracts. One's in the northeast corner of the map and one's in the southeast corner of the map. Over in this corner, on the northeast side of the map, we have the trailer park extract. We can just run into the back over here and now we get our extract prompt. Or, we can just walk down the road here. And here's our crossroads extract. Um, with that, that's going to cover our offline raid. Now. Uh, next up is going to be the live raid, where we're going to go in and try and get our first look at a fresh account going into the first customs match. Okay guys, real quick before we proceed, there is out of bound limits for some of these maps. Usually you're blocked in, but on several of the maps there are off limit zones that you aren't warned by other than a small sign saying, hey if you go past me you'll die. So we're going to cover that for the customs map real quick. It's in the very north center of the map. Uh, there's only one section of the map that does this. There's a few other maps that do this, um, such as shoreline and reserve and woods um, but we'll get to those at a later time all you need to know for this one is if you're in the north side of the map you're past stronghold here you're past you know old gas station and crack house this section right here where the railways lead out of tarkov um, this sign says hey there's snipers ahead and just to give you a little bit more clarity on some of this stuff they're saying hey watch out this is death there's a dead guy right here and if you keep walking and ignore all the signs there's nothing you can do about this. You're going to start, you're going to get targeted by a sniper from up there, right? So don't be that guy. If you go out there, you're going to lose your gear. You're not going to get it back. All right. Our main goal here is survival. Uh, we're over here by RUAF. And our goal is to just get items, not take fights, uh, and get it alive. So oh, we definitely want to make our way west because that gets us closer to our extract. Unfortunately, we're in some pretty high traffic areas, so we... We're already going to get into a fight. We've lost a limb, we've fractured, and we've killed a man. Let's go ahead and check our health and make sure that our thorax is topped off. If our thorax or head gets uh, shot, we die. So. We'll go ahead and move his... Um, oh, that's helpful. Move his gear into... Or his dog tag into our pouch so that we can sell it for a little bit of rubles at the end of a raid. I 
unknown key. We'll need this in a little bit, so we'll go ahead and take this. And that red gunpowder is actually going to be pretty useful for money early on. The goal is to generally not run into a dude that close, but we were kind of like in a crappy spot and not in the open, so I didn't want to make a run for it. Now, I would go into Crack House, but that generally tends to be highly trafficked, uh, and you're going to get some pretty big people trying to run into there. So I think for the purposes of this, we're going to avoid. And there's also more people over here in Stronghold, so we're going to want us to avoid that. Anybody who's wearing armor, we're going to have a really hard time getting through at this point, um, especially with unstable hands. So, <laughs> uh, avoid. Right, there's somebody in construction. That's not too helpful for us. Also, generally speaking, any kind of like gun mechanical item, you it doesn't really sell for a whole bunch. You don't necessarily want to hold on to those. You'll make room for almost any barter item that you find. So we'll probably just go ahead and drop this. All right, decisions. How do we not die here? Um, let's see. What can we keep? It's probably this is probably the most valuable. Actually, unknown key and this can wait. We'll take the gunpowder too. If let's try and go out this way. We need to not rush it. But I don't want to be ha around here long enough that uh, people passing through the area are gonna want to take a shot at me. So we know they're actively in construction right now. We're going to avoid that, and we're gonna have to push towards stronghold. I'm gonna go ahead and pop painkillers here, so that my uh, my armor is at least stabilized. And if we die, then we're gonna lose the painkillers anyways. That's good. Uh, we can take that. All right, we're going to take the azimuth and just load it up. Um, I would normally take that armor too, but because um, it's class three, but it's so shot up that uh, it really doesn't have much use for us. We'll go prone here. Give us a few seconds here. PSO, we're not really worried about. Tracer ammo, we're not worried about. And yeah, we don't need any of this stuff. I could live to regret that, but. sake man <laughs> we gotta get out of here we're dead we don't have a lot of salmon either So there's some stashes and stuff right here that we would also hit, but those guys are like hot on my trail. I, I really want to put as much space as possible in between me and them. It's already hit. And they're still throwing nades. What the hell? All right. I'm leaving. I'm out. So, okay. What are our options here? Our option is to die right there. They chased us down anyways. <laughs> Alright, welcome to Tarkov. Alright, take two and the same spawn, which isn't super uh, exciting because it is such an unsafe spawn. Again, middle click to identify items and then if it's going to be an item that you're going to be picking up and putting into your inventory, you hold control and left click, it'll just do it automatically instead of trying to drag and drop. If you can equip it, you hold alt instead and then click. So we're going to try and avoid the north section over there and instead make our way through construction here. I think the ultimate goal is just to get to the west side of the map before people start really hitting all the routes and see if I can absorb some loot and get out. Come back behind here. There's a few little 
pickups and it's a nice little break from all the gun firing that's currently happening. Just make sure you watch behind you for people that might have moved in or scavs that might have spawned. I'll just keep going. Somebody sprinting on the road over here. Might be a scab, but it might also be in PMZ. My guess is it's that scab that we just shot at. It's a PMC. So we'll go ahead and take that. We'll just basically suck up anything that we can get our hands on right now. So this is just another secret stash. We'll get into this stuff later. Um, but generally speaking, you just want to try and find places that let you loot and then take those things. Oh, yeah, right. So... You have to identify the stuff in order to, to manipulate it. So we needed to identify the magazine so that we could open it up here. Right. So it's not open currently, which means nobody's been here yet. Um, if you see a scope, any kind of optical mount uh, or a suppressor, um, those are generally, you pick those up because they, they almost always will sell for a, a decent amount. And then just if you, you hold your left click, you can see it'll turn some stuff green uh, if it can actually slot onto the item. And if you see one of those, then right, just like that. So the pack of meds, um, as I described in the other video, is one of the first starter items that you really want uh, to unlock the med station. So we've got one of the two items that we need. The um, disposable syringe is the only other one, and that'll help us start crafting uh, Salewas. We'll check checkpoint to see if there's a scav. If there is a scav, we might risk looting that guy because they generally, that guy will tend to have a, a decent amount of loot for us. Oat flakes, uh, we'll just go ahead and eat those because our um, energy is pretty far down there. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is usually when you, when you eat most foods, there is a hydration penalty associated with them. So double click your, your food items and make sure it's not gonna completely dehydrate you um, before doing that kind of stuff. Um, but in general, being dehydrated is significantly better than being um, out of energy. The, the penalties are a little bit more severe. So there might be some in front of the checkpoint here. I'm really not worried about that. I'm just I'm just trying to see if there's a guy up on the railing up here. Um, because you'll have usually some kind of sniper or SKS. But since I'm not seeing it, we're just going to avoid, move on. I really like checking this building. 
Um, there are a ton of barter items that are very helpful early on in the game. drop this for the wires if you see wires or light bulbs you really want those right now a gas analyzer is an early quest item we're going to go ahead and make room for that we'll drop the weapon parts for it Get out of here. Go right, make sure there's no scabs, just kind of waiting or PMCs. And over here to the left, open up the door, get out of here. Tired of this motherfucking shit. Uh huh. All right, so uh, another scav kill. Uh, we got a lot of butter items. We didn't get immediate quest progression. Um, very technically, we didn't find a Salewa. We didn't get an MP133, um, but both of those have ways around it. We got um, a pack of meds, which is one of the items to unlock med station, which will get us our Salewas. And then we got um, uh, a Taz, which is actually useful in a later quest, as well as a gas analyzer. So not the worst uh, by any means. And if you want to see some of this stuff in action, you can come check me out on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Deviant where I'm streaming uh, most days of the week. Hope to see you there.